Thanks very much for being here. We're excited to dive a little bit deeper into our new council structure with all of our wonderful council leaders. We really think the councils are a new way for SMI members to connect and to lead the industry forward in a more long-term strategic way than we've done traditionally with our initiatives. So we're excited about that. Um, the mission of the councils is really to provide direction and insight to SMI members, to the industry on targeted issues that have been important to SMI members for quite a while. So they're focused on these specific issues. We're focused on leading edge and best practices, and then allowing us to sustain those commitments over time. We've got a steering committee that's going to oversee all of the work of the councils, and then we've got members of individual councils that will be working on their individual activities. Um, just quickly, and again, I'm going to go briefly through these, but we will send the slides out with a recording of today's webinar so that if you want to share it with other members or uh, review it for questions, you can certainly do that. Um, our councils are planning to meet at least four times a year, twice in person at SMI forums, and then twice via video call. And then additionally, if there's things that the members want to talk about, you know, we are very flexible on these councils and making sure that they meet the needs of the folks that are on the councils, that they're really feeling like they're accomplishing what they're looking to accomplish. Um, They'll remain a topic on a council will remain in place at least two years. So it's different than our traditional initiatives where we've had shorter term projects. These are really designed to be long term think tank types of an approach to considering and understanding an idea a little bit more deeply than we've done in the past. Um, we want, as we all do with all SMI activities, we want the participation to be balanced between providers and suppliers. So you'll see that our leaders of the councils today, we have one industry partner and one provider for every council leadership uh, role. And we will continue to do that as well as keeping the participation balanced between providers and suppliers. We're looking for a two-year commitment. We understand that may not always be possible, but we're looking for people to really stay involved and engaged in these um, councils for a little bit longer time rather than popping in and out. And then it's really a members only event uh, activity. Um, if there's subject matter experts that it makes sense to add over time, we can definitely do that. But what we're looking to do is bring SMI members together and get the benefit of our collective thinking and then add information from outside sources as it becomes appropriate. We will take notes at every council meeting, and that's just a little housekeeping task. Um, we've got roles and responsibilities, again, just to kind of level set. The council co-chairs are going to be providing leadership. The SMI staff will be providing all of the support, doing research, whatever we can do to make sure the councils are able to get their work done easily and quickly. And then from a council member perspective, we're asking that members obviously attend the meetings, provide insights share their ideas, um, jump in to do projects when they have time and feel like it's important. So we're really just looking for the members to be engaged and help lead this work. I think you've all probably seen this infographic on our councils, but these are the four topics that we're focusing on in our first council sessions. Um, clinical integration, which has long been an important value for SMI. Collaboration, obviously core to everything we do. Diversity and inclusion, very important for all of our members these days, especially. And then the, the um, what was important before, but is even more important now, resilience and transparency, and really focusing on how can we get a better, more resilient supply chain going forward. Um, we're excited about our chairs. We've got chairing the Clinical Integration Council, Burton Filler from Johns Hopkins and Jim Goodman from Smith & Nephew, chairing the Collaboration Council with us today, Jim Francis from Mayo Clinic and Susan Lewis from Staples, chairing the Diversity and Inclusion Council. We have Bill Moyer from Henry Ford Health System and Robert Rajalingham from Cardinal Health, and then chairing the Resilience and Transparency Council. We have Amanda Chawla uh, from Stanford and Alan Mavis from Baxter. And each of those teams is going to share a little bit about their vision for their council today with you during the course of this webinar. Um, in addition, on the Clinical Integration Council, we have Lisa Ishii from Johns Hopkins, uh, who is a physician from Johns Hopkins, and Rohan Sanawane, who is from um, Medtronic, and they will be leading our physician advisory work group. So we're excited to have them as a part of our clinical act integration activity and really bring that clinician perspective to the work that we're doing in the clinical integration group. So I'm gonna just turn it over to Steve and Donna quickly for a little bit of um, presentation on the steering committee, the role and um, how you see the, the group working together. Thank you, Nancy. Um, and thank you everyone for joining today. 
um, on behalf of Donna and myself, um, we appreciate uh, the engagement in SMI and also the important work that was just over overviewed by, by Nancy. Um, so I'm Steve Gunderson, Donna Drummond, you're all familiar with from Northwell Health. Um, I'm the, the current chairman of the board for SMI and uh, very happy uh, that Donna will be the chair elect uh, in next uh, calendar year and then the, the upcoming chairman in 2023. Uh, our role uh, as uh, uh, participants in SMI is really to make sure that this important work uh, has the focus and energy and resourcing to make the, the activity successful. So first thing is making sure the forums uh, and the strategies and the ideas that are uh, communicated at those important forums are sound and aligned. The virtual for, uh, programming that we've all been part of, it's been so successful over these challenging two years or so uh, is online. And then of course, the work that we've just provided some oversight to. So really important that everyone uh, participates. We've got as an industry, more challenges and more opportunities today than ever, uh, making SMI even more important and relevant. So look forward to working with Donna uh, and all of you and really driving some important change uh, in the marketplace. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Steve. Wonderful. So we're going to get started with our councils now and give you each an overview, uh, give you an overview of each one of our council groups. I'd like to start with Burton Fuller and Jim Goodman, who are going to give you a brief overview about the Clinical Integration Council. Burton and Jim. Great. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Nancy. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really excited to introduce um, this, this council here um, with, with Jim Goodman as well. Um, the Clinical Integration Council, um, as the uh, slide suggests, um, our, our goal and our objective is to lead the industry in an effective and sustainable integrated relationship between supply chain clinical teams and the physician supply chain leaders. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to be a, a co-chair um, uh, as the Vice President of Supply Chain for the Johns Hopkins Health System. I'm also happy to introduce uh, Dr. Lisa Ishii, um, uh, our uh, Senior Vice President for Operations, also from the Johns Hopkins Health System, uh, Jim. Yeah, appreciate that, and uh, really looking forward to uh, working with you and the team. Uh, in addition to myself, uh, I am uh, working at Smith and & Nephew and uh, on the physician advisory side from industry. Uh, Rohan has is, is joined us as well as our uh, senior medical uh, affairs manager, and um, I think combined, we're looking at all sides of the, uh, the equation, so the supply chain, the clinical teams, and then the piece that, that has been missing. Uh, in some cases has been the uh, physician supply aspect of, to it as well. So as we, we think about that, um, we wanted to um, also go through the next uh, piece, which are the key questions. And, you know, these are some things in addition to other areas that we'll focus in on, but it's really, really important that when we talk about this integration is understanding the, uh, the clinical integration supply chain on what is the process for making decisions? So we really want to dig a little bit deeper into more of a root cause approach to things uh, as we then start to transition to understand some of the barriers to achieving those clinical integrated supply chains and really who's accountable for doing what. So almost putting a racy around that. So it just helps us to better understand the process, the people, and what needs to go into it. And then another piece which is very uh, relevant to where we are in, uh, in just in today is uh, with COVID and the pandemics is understanding is the clinical integration been impacted either negatively or positively? Has it changed the way that uh, business is being done and activities are being conducted to ensure that we are getting the most out of that? And then does the clinical integration um, Im improve resiliency by having a process in place? Does that help us? or potentially uh, does it stifle us? So those are a couple of things that, we were, uh, that we, we've come to think about. Great, thank you, Jim. And I know um, the, the council members will look forward to having a discussion about those key topics in January at our first council meetings at the forum. So we'll look forward to that clinical integration group having that very um, interesting and, and robust discussion. I think we also wanted to take a minute to talk about the clinical advisory, excuse me, the physician advisory work group as a part of your council. 
Absolutely. Uh, Burton, did you want to take that one? Sure, happy to. One of the one of the things that we are um, extremely excited about, and I think that differentiates this um, this effort that SMI is leading, is the the notion of of integrating a physician advisory group um, into um, the some of the clinical integration issues and, and challenges that we'll be talking through that, that Jim introduced. Um, it's really intended to to drive a direct connection between um, physicians and and our supply chains. Um, to problem solve key issues and identify some of the best practices for, for integration um, so that we ensure that similar to some of those questions we are trying to um, solve for, that we have um, physician input and guidance on, on how we are framing the problems as well as how we are um, framing the, um, the solution. And I, I think it's an interesting concept um, because it's really intended to, to present a diet um, where we, we partner um, physician and, and supply chain um, uh, leaders uh, together, um, targeting uh, 10 pairs. Um, we are working to recruit uh, additional um, membership on this um, uh, physician advisory group um, and hope, hoping that folks will um, initiate by, by sharing via email their interest in, in joining. Um, uh, and, and again, would, would ask that they, um, as they express that interest, that they highlight um, that uh, if they have a physician um, in their organization that they would like to participate and include in that physician advisory council. Um, and Jane Pleasance can be the recipient of that email for those that are interested, and we're really hoping that this is a, um, a way that we can differentiate uh, both uh, um, this opportunity within SMI, but for those that are interested, um, it's a great way to start engaging um, physicians within your organization, whether you're on the provider or on the manufacturer side, uh, to be a part of these critical conversations. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Burton. And thank you all for stepping up to provide leadership to that group. We know it's going to be a great, great, leader, great group of leaders putting together some creative new ideas to help solve problems. So next up, we have the chairs of our Resilience and Transparency Council, Alan Mavis from Baxter and Amanda Chowla from Stanford. And I will turn it over to the two of you to tell us about your plans for your council. All right. Thank you, Nancy. And again, I'm Alan Mavis. I'm with our National Accounts and Strategic Accounts team with Baxter and my, my partner in crime, Amanda uh, Chawla, uh, Chief Supply Chain Officer from Stanford, is actually out, I think, handling a, a, a supply chain problem right now. But I think she may be listening in online. So, Amanda, if you're there. She's actually um, here on video, uh, Alan. You probably can't see I, her, I but she's down at the end of yeah. the screen. She just she just joined us on video in, in a mask. So she's somewhere in a secure environment. Fantastic. Man, glad, glad you could join. We're, we're thrilled to be leading this this council. And you can see kind of the the, the um, our charter there is to create and foster an understanding and embracing of the critical elements that will positively support the imperative of establishing and sustaining a more resilient and transparent healthcare supply chain. I mean, let's face it, the world's changed. We're in a new normal, whatever that is. Massive supply ch uh, chain issues are facing all of us, impacting every facet of our lives. So, you know, how do you really ensure from a healthcare standpoint, you've got the right product in the right quantity and the right clinician's hand at the right time and in the utopia world all of the time? kind of a lofty goal. So it's really, you know, this council is about how do you how do you build a highly reliable, transparent, and sustainable supply chain. And, and now's the time to double down on our intentions uh, to tackle this challenge. It's going to take providers and suppliers working at an extremely elevated level based on trust, transparency, and high collaboration. So this council will really give members who, who want to be part of it a unique uh, opportunity to tackle this challenge, um, you know, and, and which is mission critical in establishing a high reliable supply chain. Some of the things we're thinking about, Nancy, thanks for going to, to the questions that we're going to kind of tackle in this council is, you know, what are the most pressing issues or issues hindering the healthcare industry from achieving a resilient and transparent supply chain? Um, and as you think about your own organization, what are the two or three top things you've identified that you need, need to address to become more resilient, more sustainable, more reliable within your own, within your own organization? And then kind of more of a, a longer term vision 
question here, um, which is number three, not number one on the screen there. But it's, uh, you know, what's the one thing that will have transformed the way you operate your organization and the one thing the healthcare supply chain industry will have addressed by 2030 that supports an immune, reliable, and high-value supply chain organization? So this, this work is critically important. We need you to lean in and really help us transform how we're going to tackle these issues. The good news is Amanda and I and many from the SMI community have already been working on um, some best demonstrated practices to get the ball rolling. We've got a, uh, a re high reliable, a resilient maturity model that we're working on and honing in, and a lot of SMI members have weighed in on it already. But we'd love for you to, to, to take part in this council. And you know, besides Amanda and my magnetic personality, I think we're going to have a lot of fun, but there's a lot of work to do. So we implore you to join and, and be part of this council. Thank you, Alan. Thanks a lot. It's a, it's a great group. And um, the initiative that we've done, that we've been doing is rolling up under this group. So um, the work is already underway. And I think it's a great, great topic for us to focus on. Thank you. The next council we want to introduce you to is our Diversity and Inclusion Council with Bill Moyer from Henry Ford and Robert Rogelingham from Cardinal leading the force. So I'll turn it over to you, to you gentlemen. Great. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, and to SMI for the opportunity to, to chair the Diversity and Inclusion Council along with Bill. You know, it's, a, it's something Bill and I are both uh, very passionate about and really focused on in our work, uh, myself at Cardinal Health and Bill at Henry Ford. Uh, why are we excited about it, right? We know diversity and inclusion drives results, uh, whether it's business results or team performance, however however you measure it. Uh, we know it helps in recruiting and retention. We know turnover in the industry is the highest it's ever been. And um, there's really nothing healthcare needs more right now than to continue to attract and retain the best people and create a culture that really um, unlocks you know, their best ideas, right? At all levels and brings innovation forward. It also includes when you think about the group on this call and SMI more broadly as supply chain professionals, what can we do to really uh, enable supplier diversity? And when we unlock that, all the benefits that, that come with that. So I'll, um, I'll turn it to Bill to share a little bit more on our, kind of our vision priorities and, and some of the key questions that we teed up. Yeah, Robert, uh, thank you. And SMI, thank, thanks for having us. I think this is an incredibly important initiative, uh, not just in healthcare, uh, obviously across the industry, when we think about diversity and DEIJ tactics, and, and many of us across industry uh, and non-industry are really focusing on what are our ESG strategies of the future. But as far as this council goes, um, Robert and I have had lengthy conversations about our vision for this. And, and really, to me, this council is about being bold and action. And how do we challenge one another, but also industry to move this initiative forward? And I won't read each question, Nancy, specifically, but just, just to quickly paraphrase, um, you know, our conversations are going to be rooted in where is the industry now? Where are you uh, from a supplier diversity program perspective? And where's the commitment levels from your C-suite? Uh, I think two is what challenges do we see around supplier diversity? Um, Robert and I have had lengthy conversations around that as well. And there's certainly challenges uh, to how do we elevate this, uh, whether it be spend or engagement with these vendors. And then lastly, but certainly not at least, it's, it's how do we ideate as a group and as an industry around what do we want to do to drive, to really, what can we do to drive this forward and not just talk? Uh, and that's going to be a huge element of our January conversation is how do we level set? How do we consider and think through how do we brainstorm? And then really, how do we start generating some action around some of these conversations? And frankly, how do we, we, we leverage a scale of SMI to lock arms and drive this forward, not just by one individual organization or another, it, it's as a group. Uh, and so we're really excited about that considering, you know, and Robert laid it out nicely of all the benefits of effectively doing this. And as anchor institutions for, I can speak for the healthcare providers, um, we, have, we have deep uh, requirements of what we need to do for our communities. Um, and as frankly, for our vendor partners, how do you enable that activity? And this is what this is really about. Um, so really excited to be here and uh, excited for the next steps. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill and Robert. And we're excited to have you leading up these, the, this, this initiative, this work. Um, and finally, our fourth, fourth but not certainly not least, 
maybe, maybe first, because collaboration has always been a core value of SMI. And so we've felt like having a collaboration council and being able to really con continuously focus on collaboration and what are the best practices was a really important part of this council structure. And I'm gonna turn the conversation over to Jim Francis from Mayo and Susan Lewis from Staples who are leading the collaboration council. Thanks, Nancy, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, both Susan and I are pleased to be with you this afternoon and share a little bit about the collaboration council that's uh, being created. Uh, we're also pleased that Eric O'Daffer, who is a research vice president with Gartner, will be assisting us with this um, council specifically. You know, I, I don't think uh, Susan and I probably need to share with anybody on the webinar today the importance of collaboration, uh, particularly in an environment where we're still very much in a pandemic and have a tremendous number of supply disruptions going on. So collaboration, though, can be really defined differently, depend upon who you're talking to in the industry. And it will be the focus of this council to bring some structure, if you will, around what we mean by collaboration as an industry. You know, I think we're all optimistic that someday we'll move beyond where we are uh, today and focus on post-pandemic recovery and, and addressing many of the challenges and issues that we have um, learned, not only from the pandemic, but also now experiencing with disruption. So, the key, I think, will be how, as industry leaders, do we build a more strategic, more agile, more transparent relationship with our trading partners to create even more collaboration. So some of the questions that we've contemplated for this work group are listed here on this slide. Uh, but I will say, you know, one of the beauties of doing this through a council where you have diverse input and leadership is to guide the outcomes from this work uh, as a group. But, um, you know, some of the initial things Susan and I have talked a little bit about is how do you define collaboration and what do you view it uh, as, what do you view the current state in the industry related to uh, collaboration? Um, you know, are there best practices out there that we should try to understand and share uh, between trading partners? and kind of what are some of the more pressing issues that uh, we feel in SMI should uh, lend themselves to be addressed collaboratively. But uh, again, I wanna emphasize, um, you know, the whole purpose behind having a council is to solicit your great input and feedback and help correct uh, the outcomes or the outputs from this council. So we'll hope you'll have interest in it. Thank you so much, Jim. Susan, any other comments? I agree with everything Jim said. Um, looking forward to working on, on this. And I and to Jim's point, I mean, just with everything that everyone's been through over the last few years, it's more important than ever that we, uh, that we collaborate and figure out the wins for everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, we, are, we have gotten through a lot of information in a short period of time. I thank all of our panelists for um, making it happen and for getting all the information together in such a concise and quick format. Um, for the participants, we um, would encourage you that if you have not yet registered for an SMI council, you can do so. There is a link in the chat and we will also be sending out a follow-up email to all the members to um, share this video along with the deck, the slide deck, so you have that for reference and also with the registration link. If you can't remember if you've registered or not, just register again. We'll take whatever your most recent registration is and we'll put you in that council now that you have a little bit more information, but we'd rather have you register twice than that at all. So make sure you get registered. And if for any reason you aren't thinking you could be, are able to come to the forum in January, that will not change your participation in a council. These councils are long-term. So we want you to be registered so that you can get all the communication about the council and participate um, in certainly the online and, and then the in-person programs at the forums as well. So we're excited about these new councils. Again, thanks to our wonderful council chairs who have stepped up to lead this incredible work. And we look forward to seeing some really really fascinating and interesting work coming out of these groups next year and in the years to come. Thanks so much, everyone.